place and we are seeing all these stones in the river beds and everywhere. So those stones are called as the Sui Seki stones. That's why they are called as the uh, Sui Seki water stones. Usually we will get these stones near the river beds and the coastal areas and the, on the mountains also. These are not the uh, one day stones or one or two year stones. They are shaped due to the uh, million trillion years back. They are inside the water and they are give, uh, the water is giving a shape to the stones. And uh, those stones are uh, here. These are the individual stones. When we are uh, collecting this Suiseki stones, me, that is the individual, individual stone. They, in the Suiseki art also, there are many divisions are there. Baiseki, Bonseki, there are different, different uh, stones uh, art is there. First, we are seeing about the Suiseki stone. And uh, Suiseki is the art, it is originated in from the China. Chinese are the first people in uh, 206 BC period, that is Han dynasty. During the Han dynasty, during the Han dynasty, the, we can see there is a uh, evidence of uh, stones, they are displayed in their gardens. So big stones are there, they are displayed in the garden. Those during this Han dynasty, from that period, this uh, the art of appreciation of the stones is there, and it is originated from China. Then after that, in 12th century, by Shang dynasty, and it is went to Japan, and Japanese people appreciated this art, and they started displaying the Suiseki stones with bonsai plants. And uh, that is the time this Sui Seki art and the bonsai arts they are started going together. Then when you are playing a displaying a one bonsai plant and we are displaying a Sui Seki stone also, they, they display in a one corner, that corner is called as the Tokonoma corner. Tokonoma is the place where we display our bonsai plants and the suiseki stones. So that time they are going together with the bonsai plant and the suiseki stones. After that many in the 14th century many people they like the suiseki art and they started growing many suiseki stones. They entirely into the suiseki art only. Now there are the suiseki schools are there those where we will learn the so we have to know about the suiseki art and uh, there are suiseki organizations are there clubs are there so it is entirely now many people are started learning suiseki art and they are uh, this there is a separate uh, place is there in the museums and the exhibitions and the judges they are judging the stones and they are awarding awarding the awards also like that Suiseki now it is become very famous and uh, it is started growing and growing. Now actually why you are starting appreciating the stones? From the olden days, from the olden days if any stone is there that is in the unusual shape or uneven shape, we feel like collecting the stones. That is uh, for the maybe for the religious reasons or maybe for the aesthetic sense. If it is for the religious regions in India, then people will collect from the stones from the Brahmaputra and the uh, Ganga river, uh, those are the soligrams. We will collect those soligrams and we feel like keeping them at our worship place. Like that, many people are there, they are collecting the stones for the religious purpose and for the aesthetic sense also. Sometimes they are used as a tools also. Like that, they started growing, uh, uh, started bringing the stones into their homes, and they are displaying in the in their houses, maybe in a corner or maybe in a shelf or in the on their tables. Like that, the stone appreciation art is started, and uh, people started feeling we are bringing nature into our houses. That is the time we started loving the. Uh, Swiss Techie Stones 
and we are bringing the nature there is a lot of harmony is there between the stone and the man because when you are actually that mr kimura masahiko kimar is a bonsai artist he is into suiseki stones as he is a lot many collections of suiseki stones he says there is a soul in the rock that soul is the main thing that express that gives the energy to the entire room or for us then some people will say these are the incarnation of energy if you study this suiseki stones going to deep that art lot of philosophy is there the people will say there is these are the incarnations of energy and whole in universe is embedded inside the stone when you start doing meditation meditating is in stone in front of you we will feel the mountains and we will feel the rivers and the valley inside the stone and you feel like it is a miniature form of the nature like that whole universe is embedded inside the stone and they are the they give they give vital energy to us when you are bringing the stone into our houses or when you are appreciating the stones that why that's why people started loving suiseki stones and they started growing on their own then usually we will get the stones near the river beds and the mountains and the coastal areas and uh, when you are how when you are seeing a stone then you may get a doubt of how much big stone we have to bring at home and uh, how much small stone can be appreciated the big stone the size of the stones when you are collecting it should be uh, the strength or heaviness of the stone we can carry with your both hands we can carry with the both hands that much heaviness is enough and that is can be displayed as a suiseki stone then so, uh, i have a question Chai. yeah sure uh, uh, that can be easily uh, uh, lifted. Lifted. lifted you can you can be, maybe some uh, strength you have to use it uh -huh. then you can be, it can be lifted with your hands right depending on your weight and the strength so when you are lifting with your hands that is called that is the size of the stone we can display in our houses so the minimum size comes to be it is should be a little bigger size, uh, size than our jewelry stone then uh, little bit bigger means so the we can see the embedded impressions of the stones maybe rivers or the maybe stars and so we can see them clearly that's why it should be little bit bigger than the stone of a jewelry uh, stone so like that when you are collecting the stones we, uh, when you bring them home first we have to wash them with clean water jet water put jet water and clean it and clean the stone and we can use mild detergent but don't use any acids or anything then once you bring them home don't try to cut those stones these are the stones they are as it is they we didn't made any cut only we can make one or two cuts to give a base to the uh, to stand tall we, we can give a base by cutting the base or back side that's all but we are not shaping the stone that is the main beauty of these collected suiseki stones so then after that once you bring them home then we wash them and uh, with a brush toothbrush or the these are the brushes usually i will use for cleaning the suiseki stones so what we'll do we'll take the stone and we'll rub them like that so that if any dust is there it comes out so we have to wash them like that we can see them now we have to clean them with the brush these these are the iron bristles and this are the strong enough to clean the stone we have to clean them like that <coughs> then after cleaning them with the cloth then take your hand and our hands always having some moisture and the some oil will be there so with your hand just press it 
and apply your hand moisture to the stone this regularly that means uh, regularly if you do it like this we can see the uh, this one um, movements of the stones inside the curves and the uh, this up and down structure of the stones we can see clearly and they will be displayed in a uh, uh, beautiful manner so like this once in a day we have to rub them like that and we can uh, showcase in your shelf or in on our tables so like that we have to clean them but don't use any acids or any other material they can damage the stones now after that then once you got the stones then we have we feel like displaying the stones now today kapil got this stone this is the carboratum uh, stone this stone is the actually this is not a natural stone this is stone is uh, artificially made stone then he was asking how we can make a base for this one then when you bought these stones there are two types of bases are there one is called as the uh, diazo this is the diazo diazo means thus this uh, base is made with wooden in japan they made with, with uh, rose wood and uh, different uh, quality of wood and they make them as a base for the uh, suiseki stone that is called as diazo that is called as the diazo diazo is a one we are making with wooden piece and uh, according to the shape of the stone we carve the wood according to the shape of the base of the stone we are carving the wood and we are placing it in the wooden base this is called diazo and this is suiseki entire element is called as the suiseki this is one type of uh, displaying the stones in diazo and second one is called suiban second one is called as a suiban suiban means we are displaying stones in a uh, in a trays it might be a ceramic tray it might be a marble tray or like this it might be a marble tray or it can be a ceramic tray we can display these stones in this uh, in this type of ceramic trays i when you are displaying them we should have some basic uh, uh, this uh, basic ground should be there for this uh, suiseki stone for that basic ground what we are doing we are putting some sand sand that is this is the white sand sand this is the white sand and we are putting in the marble tray uh, tray like this and we are placing the stone like this we are placing the stone like that so this in the sieve bun we can put sand maybe white color or maybe brown color you can use the brown color sand also you can use white color sand or we can use brown color sand and we can put it in the sieve bun and we can place your stone like this we can place your stone like this this is the base of for the base for the suiseki stone now after making this one instead sometimes instead of this uh, sand or the wood in the marble tray we can use water you can use water and you can display your stone and when you are displaying in water that will be called as the 
when you are putting water here and we are displaying the stone and this will be like a island this will be like a island and this will be like a island here and entire water will be there and we can showcase your suiseki stone like this you can display in water or you can display in what uh, sand different colors like white or brown are the best colors for suitable for the suiseki stones and we can display them in the brown uh, uh, brown base parts you can take them like this and you can arrange them in the this then after that there is a Classification. Now we are seeing different, many, many different, different uh, stones are there, and uh, these stones they are how to uh, when you are uh, seeing this many stones you will make confused why we are displaying this many stones what is the importance of that one so that's why while many suiseki artists they had divided into they classified into different uh, divisions depending on the shape of the stone and the structure of the stone first one is called as the first one is called uh, the landscaping stones first one is called as the landscaping stone landscaping stones are the stones when you are displaying these stones we can see the we can see mountains we can see rivers we can see valleys all those things in a single stone that uh, that is called as a landscaping stone this type of stones are called as a landscaping stones so landscaping stone is the one division then after that second one is the object stones object suiseki this object suiseki means we can see uh, animals or we can see human beings in the stone there may be a uh, fish like thing or camel like thing stones will be there that is the object stone those are the object stones and we can play sometimes we can see the human beings and a uh, woman sitting with a baby or only one woman sitting like this so many sumo warrior you can see the sumo warriors also like this so many different different stones are there those are called as the uh, objects so you say key stones after that celestial celestial sui seki stone celestial sui seki stones are the ones those here we can see sun moon or the stars if you see the sun moon or stars in the stone that is called as the celestial stone and uh, next one is the plant stones sometimes we see in suiseki stones in the collected stones we will see a uh, plant like structure we can see a flower like structure or embedded inside the stone or maybe entire uh, stone can be resembles as a plant that is called as the plant suiseki then after that weather suiseki weather suiseki weather suiseki is the stone there we will see some rain drops on the stone or some uh, snow in, on the top of the mountain those are called as the weather stones then after that abstract abstract stones are the one on the stone we will see a, some entangled uh, lines that will be just like a net they will be we can see the car lines will be there those lines uh, if they are uh, lines are there those are the abstract stones like that they have given many divisions depending on the uh, what the depending on the resemblance of the stone and we can see all with and they can be classified into different different divisions now first i am going to show you the my collection of these stones and how i we can name them and why we, how we can make the base and uh, how to display them now we'll study those stones first one is a landscaping stone now we are seeing here the landscaping stone when you are seeing this stone 
we can see the peak of the mountains there are some peaks are there this is the tallest one second tallest and the down and this is the base of the rim then if you keep this stone in front of you and if you meditate you can feel like the river is there this portion is there rivers and uh, the, here it is also river and this is plateau like thing when you are entering and uh, taking on the mountain you can see the river and plateau and the uh, that uh, rough structure of the nature and we are climbing it to the peak of the stone like that we can imagine all those scenes in a in a single sui seki stone that that gives immense pleasure to keep on our table on, on our shelf and that is the beauty of the stone that's why we are this that is appreciating the stones in the uh, beautiful way if you see this is resembling like a mountain and this will be a river and this is a river and you can see the uh, structure of the stone and we are made a base of C1 and we kept the base with the sand resembling the same color so this is the landscaping stone and uh, this is one of the uh, landscaping sui seki and after that this is the mountain stone if you see the western gods many people are interested in trekking and like that this is that this is a picture of a western gods if you see this western gods this stone is also resembling the western gods here now like this it is resembling the western gods and you can see the highest peak and the lowest peak and we, this is the daiso for this western gods so this stone is representing our western gods of maharashtra yeah now in india the sui seki stones they are called as uh, shilpa uh, shila uh, shilakhand shilakhand they are called as the shilakhand in the, our uh, marathi name is shilakhand <laughs> <laughs> Shilakhand. So in Japan it is called as the Suiseki. In China it is called Ganshi. In China it is called as Ganshi. In China it is called a Ganshi or Scholar stones they are called as a scholar stones then this is the gangsti gangshi stone of china and sui seki stone of america and shilakan of western guards of india now we will see another stone can see layers of the rocks you can see the layers of rocks are there and this is the sedimentation this is the sedimentation of rock over the years million trillion years back so one layer by layer they sedimented of the calcium and the minerals and these are formed inside the earth and these are called as the sedimented rocks and this sediment uh, this is the arizona um, this one, uh, this uh, des uh, area, desert area, and there we can see this type of stones, and this is the stone sedimented rock of the so. And in uh, our western ghats also, we can see these layers of stones, and the sedimented stones are there. And this is the we can say this is the sedimented stones of the western ghats, and we can see this is the smooth surface and if you try to climb if you, when you feel like climbing we can flow from here slowly will go up to the peak of this mountain so like that we are when you are displaying stones we are feeling the 
beauty of these stones actually we are bringing nature into our houses that is the beauty of the suiseki stone on this suiseki stone is displayed in the ceramic tray and this because of sedimentation we can see the nature now this some light is black color is there this uh, this is appearing because of the rubbing with the hands like that if you do regularly there will be a some that color comes out of uh, because of our hand in the oil then then you can the, you can see the uh, embedded uh, beauty of the stone <laughs> this is one more stone this is the stone this is a lava rock this is bought by me in the, in the my year strip and uh, this lava rock is the um, because of lava when it is flowing down there will be air bubbles and after some time they burst out we can see some air holes. bubbles uh, their holes will be there and the rough structure of this stone it is forming because of that one now if you see this shape of this stone it is resembling the lingana heart have you been to lingana trekking anybody I have heard of it. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, I did it. So, Lingana it's is the uh, very toughest trek in yes. the Western Ghats. Sure, yeah. Western Ghats. But really, it is very tough. After the two days, I didn't get up. My legs are right. paining like anything. It's a really very toughest trek. Mm -hmm. So, if you see the Lingana fort, it is just like this. We have to go to the top. Here, there is a cave-like thing. This is the surface of this Lingana fort and there is a cave like thing that cave we can take some rest for 15 minutes over there and we start climbing like this and we, this is the peak of the Lingana fort. Look, then when we are uh, traveling you now we feel uh, uh, that is uh, when we are reach the top of the mountain we'll forget everything and we'll forget our tiredness and everything we'll feel happy to see the entire surrounding nature of the our and western gods and the earth like that this stone is resembling the lingana fort that's why i named it as the lingana heart lingana uh, stone. stone lingana suiseki suiseki <laughs> so this is the stone of lingana fort or lingana suiseki then after that one more is there this is another stone I am showing how we are naming the stones. That's why I'm, I have taken the printouts of these uh, natural surroundings and, and we are naming them in according to the stone. These are the layered rocks. These are the layered rocks. These are also a layered rocks and this is in the western car. And uh, one more is there. Can you see, uh, can you tell me which mountain is this? Kailash. Kailash Parvat. This is the Kailash Parvat. Then when you are seeing the Kailash Parvat from a distance, it will be like this. But if you are going near this river, uh, near the Kailash Parvat, there is a cave near the Kailash Parvat. If you did the tra trekking for the Manasarovar, you can see all these things. There is a cave-like thing near the Kailash Parvat. Still People will believe saints are there inside this cave and they are doing meditation and it. In that uh, cold temperatures also, they are staying inside the cave. Still people are, so saints are there inside the cave. So, near that Kailas Falls, we see the cave and we can feel this one as the Kailas Parvat. We can feel it as the Kailas Parvat covered with the snow and there is a cave like thing and that cave is resembles the Kailas Parvat cave and these are the these ripples you can see these ripples these are the snow 
this we can resemble this white color sand is resembling the stone and this is as a kailas parva sui seki so like that we can name them all these are the are called as the landscaping stones these are called as the landscaping stones and after that then we are coming to object stones This is a this is a stone. You can see uh, Ganapati in here. You can see the stone and the Ganapati like that. Oh, this is resembling the Ganapati. So this is the Swissiki stone of Ganapati, and we made a base. We we are used a ceramic clay as the base, a dark color base, and we are put the brown color stand over the sand in the as a base to the Ganapati. And this Ganapati, now as Kimura told, these stones are having souls. Now we can feel really when we are keeping this Ganapati in a garden or in our worshipping place, we feel like he is a real Ganapati and he is giving energy to us and we can feel the soul of this Suiseki stone. So there is really there is a soul embedded inside the stones and the Suiseki stones they are giving the lot of positive energy to us and we can display them in the Shuban or Daiso like this and uh, this is one more object stone if you see this is a collected stone and this is also a collected stone and this is also a collected stone well from the western guard all these are the collected ones and this is also a collected stone from the Rajasthan this is a sandstone this is a sandstone is a, it is resembling like a sitting camel wound resembling like a wound sitting in in the sand so this is the wound stone this is a camel stone you can see the sand and the thing for some people they are saying it is sitting like it is like a fish to them for some people it is like a fish to them if you want to display yeah, yeah, yes. If you if it is a fish, you have to use water. You should not use in the sand. You have to use the water, and you have to place it in the water um, pond, and then then it will be a fish. The fishes can't stay in the sand, so that time you have to use water. But here, why I used as a camel, uh, feeling like a camel, because this sand, this stone is made from the sand. It is made from the sand, and uh, in Rajasthan, it is a desert area. Most of the stones we are getting in the, they are made from the sands, and this is the stone of uh, sand. That's why I feel like a camel, and we can place it in the. Uh, sand or uh, brown sand as uh, it is representing the desert area like this we can display in the now we are we are displaying in the siuban the last one that is very heavy and this one and who base bhi chahiye humko base nahi to nahi hoga khada nahi hoga fingers If you see this stone, the, he is having the eyes, nose, structure like this. It is a head and eyes and the nose. It is re resembling the human head. And base still now I didn't get a proper head. I didn't find a good carpenter to make a neck over here. I am using the matka ka tukda that is the broken earthen uh, pot as a neck for him and this is a human face and it is a uh, base of this one if you can see this is the human face of the uh, sui seki stone this is the, the like this we can display the, now this is a object stone this is a object stone this is called as the object stone and like this you can see Take out the base of us. To give it a little. 
It's a beautiful one, Grand Canyon. That is the Grand Canyon is a, a, in a Arizona state. That is a one place is called as a Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon is a deep valley. Once upon a time, that million trillion years back, it was a it was inside the ocean. It was inside the ocean. Now ocean is completely dried up, and we can see the stones like this, and we can see the waves. We can see the waves on this and we can feel the these waves of the this is also a of the sandstone only and uh, the, this is the bot this stone was bought in near the grand canyon and uh, i put this base for this one actually this is the base of another uh, mm -hmm. uh, this, this is, is very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel this is suiting this uh, Grand Canyon uh, Suiseki. So this one is I'm using as a base for this stone. I can, these are the, we feel like these are the deep valley. Actually, if you go near to the Grand Canyon, we can walk through the Grand Canyon like this. We can see the Grand Then the, then I, I think I have taken the. This is the picture of the Grand Canyon and we can see that when the sun rays falls from here, we can see the color of the stones like this. Mm -hmm. they, they shine like anything, that bright color, red color, pink color will be there. When the uh, sun falls like that, when the sun movement will be there and we can see entire shining of these colors and that is the beauty of the Grand Canyon. So this is the stone of Grand Canyon. I can call it as a Grand Canyon Suiseke. This is the fossil formation. This is the fossil formation of a uh, wood. For the uh, years, it is inside the soil ground and it became very hard and the, it became a stone like thing. This is also a broad stone. This is also broad in, in the Japan and we can see the heaviness of this one. Actually, it is a trunk of a tree. It is a trunk of a tree for the years together. Uh, it is uh, inside the ground and became a stone like string and it is a fossil stone. It is a fossil stone. Thank you. Now, this is also a fossil stone. Then we can see this one. It is, this is in the, this is a collected one and you can still it is in the formation and uh, it is uh, came up above the water and now it, you can see the waves here and it is also a collected stone. This is the smallest stone, this is the smallest one. In the water it is like an island like thing, it is like an island and it is water and it is like a island, you can see clearly here. And after that, we are uh, seeing the small stones now. Now, I told you about the celestial stones. Celestial stones are the one where you can see the sun, moon or stars on the stones that is called as they are called as a celestial stone and you can see there is some shining places are this is a uh, shining places are there so that's why it is called as the celestial stone and this one is placed in the sioux barn with the sand and and these are the shining pieces are the minerals actually it is a jewelry stone and uh, when you uh, this one grinded this one and we can 
find this uh, shining particle they use them in the jewelry it is a, actually a jewelry stone and uh, this can be here we are using as a celestial stone and uh, we can see these shining place uh, pieces are the stars and in the sky you can use this instead of this green uh, brown color sand we can use uh, blue color stand sand and this is a this is also a fossil and you can see the coral reefs are coral these are the coral reef embedded inside this fossil this is made with the sand of uh, um, long back and the coral reefs are embedded inside the stone and they are looking like a flowers they are looking like flowers and this is a call can be called as a chrysanthemum zone if the flower is there any type any embedded flower is there that is called as a chrysanthemum stone and it can be a, a called as a chrysanthemum suiseki and this is the coral reef embedded in the stone you can see clearly is the coral reefs here this is also a collected one <laughs> this is the crystal stones usually we will get them in the western gods these are the formation of the calcium crystals we can see that actually they will be in a uh, whole rock like this this, uh, yeah. this is they will be in a whole rock like this inside this one there will be a formation of these crystals and it will be and say like a coconut when you will break them we can see the crystals like this this is the stone of Kapil he, <laughs> he collected this stone and uh, and he want to make a base for this one maybe Daiba, Daizan or uh, Daizo or Sui, uh, Suyuan and he want to display on his table now <laughs> this is the same crystal stone and these are the in uh, western gods we are getting and uh, in near uh, this ajanta elora also mm. we are get, uh, our, um, yeah yeah stone. ajanta elora also we are uh, getting this type of stones this is also a crystal formation of the stone near ajanta elora and western gods we are getting this type of stones and uh, this is one more stone is there this is just uh, still now i have to make a base for this one uh, with the clay i made this one actually it is looking for me it is looking like a lizard lizard is crawling in the uh, uh, grass and that's why i use this green color and it is like a lizard and you can see the head and the uh, this one trunk and the bag so it is a uh, object stone it is a object sweet city and uh, this is also a sweet city stone of made with the uh, um, this one. here we can see I feel like it is a head like thing and it is a brain it is a brain inside and lot of energy is there lot of intelligence is there this is the human brain like that i'm feeling i don't know kapil what he said <laughs> so this is the human figure and, and and the brain and we can make a base for this one and we can showcase in your suisiki uh, display and uh, this is one more stone this is like a river it is like a river coming from the uh, top of the mountain and flowing down and this is also a landscape stone this is also a land landscape stones are called sham sui kaiji sheki this is called kala sham sui kaiji sheki this is the sui sheki of kaiji sheki and uh, i think almost all we finished and this is the this is I won't call it as a suiseki stone it is a wood and it is a wood formation and it is still it is 
taking a shape of a, a rock and uh, this is a collected rock it is looking like a rock this wood piece is looking like a rock that's why i collected this one and i want to make a shoe bun for this one and i'll keep it in the uh, i'll keep it in the uh, our uh, tokonoma as i told you tokonoma is a place where we can display our uh, stones on, on the one side now friends uh, i have shown all of our uh, collections and uh, what is suiseki and how to we appreciate the stones and how we are naming them everything is explained if you have any questions now we can ask and uh, i would like to um, i'm I, i'm i would like i'm happy to explain even more uh, ma'am when we are putting these stones uh, let's say to someone as a you know um, show then uh, whether that person uh, will be seeing it as a different or maybe his or her interpretation while seeing it as a different uh, one than the person who is actually presenting it so that is the possibility that could be there or whether we are putting some explanation along with the stones so that a person doing it can understand what exactly the person who is presenting it wants yeah. to say yeah, usually in the um, this way exhibitions they will put a label like thing okay. this is stone is resembling this is the main owner's important not the viewers thinking okay. so that is the owner's uh, important view is the important that is the thing, how what you are feeling is the importance so okay. how you are displaying what you are feeling is of the importance yeah. that's why we, they will put a, la a label in near beneath that one because yeah. normally in the paintings there are certain paintings uh, that paint. yeah that a painter wants the viewer to uh, you know uh, identify as what it is yeah. so i thought if this that kind of uh, you know concept is also applicable and it here. can be but it is there is no harm doing that one hmm. but it can be applicable but many people feel like they want to Uh, showcase their uh, uh, these feelings uh, about the stone so if we, if we can display if that any label is also a good just your name and how you collected when mm -hmm. you collected that one that is also a good one visually these are the small stone if it is a big stone they will put them in the gardens mm -hmm. and one buddha like stone will be there and the uh, scholars and the monks they are sitting in the in front of the buddha in the gardens they will decorate like that in japan and china those stones are called as the scholar stones Okay. That can be there. Those were the big stones, but this one you can name according to you. Otherwise, you can put the collection date and everything. That is also. Good. And this uh, Daiso and Shivan that you were talking about. Normally, uh, when uh, you are getting the stone, then obviously uh, with the shape of that stone, you will prepare it separately. Yeah. yeah. After that, right? Yeah. It's it's not like uh, we can get it first and then put up a stone and something like that. No, no, no. That it should fit inside the uh, daiso perfectly. That's the best thing. For uh, this one for Shivan, it is mm. a ceramic tray, mm. so there is no need to see the base of that one. Lot of space is there, mm -hmm. so you can arrange the stone with the uh, with the sand. Uh, water and, and in the sivan it's just like our bonsai concept that uh, the sivan should not be more attractive than the uh, you know the stone or something like that because no, in bonsai no, 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 we yeah, yeah, yeah. do this is the same. Not, uh, that is it should not dominate the yeah. it should not dominate the main suiseki and it should uh, balance the suiseki and there should be harmony between the base and the main suiseki so then only you can view the stone and we get uh, you can see the Actual view of the stone. Now, when you are, if it is a red color or blue color, mm -hmm. then it will be dominating. I use the brown color because it is sub style, sub style, and we can see the Ganpati structure. Mm -hmm. So, like that, it should not dominate. That is the main thing. 